This is version 2 of my AI powered solar weeder. It uses image classification to look at the plants below the weeder and it uses the focus power of the sun to kill the weeds. In the previous parts of the video series you've printed, assembled, and programmed the Raspberry Pi and then tested out the wiring. So now it's time to run it. Let's dig in. In order to run this thing, you're going to want to run on a sunny day between like 10 and 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. Uh, if the sun's low in the sky, you know, like early spring or late fall, uh, point the weeder at the sun, uh, drive it towards the sun because the tilt in the front can go down the furthest. It'll catch the most sun that way. Once you're ready to run, connect to the weeder Wi-Fi, pull up weeder.local slash run, and then a second tab called weeder.local so that you can look at the logs. Uh, and then you're going to want to orient to the sun. Here's a video that shows that happening. Here's a quick example run. Um, I just started this up, I connected to weeder.local, and I've pulled up the website weeder.local slash run. And I also usually pull up just the weeder.local so that I can view all of the logs here. I'll scroll down to the very bottom one and, and click into that directory and you know, take a look at the pictures that are being taken. The weeder's sitting out there, it's just waiting for commands right now. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is come back over here and choose orient to sun. That's gonna use the sun tracker and uh, than the cameras that are located inside. So let's zoom in on this, have a look. Okay, so we're gonna do uh, orient to sun. It's gonna use the sun tracker first. There it goes, it's trying to find the sun. It's springtime right now, so the sun's quite high, or quite low in the sky. Uh, it's really gonna have to tilt far to get where it needs to go. In the short span of this video where it's uh, doing the orient to sun step, uh, there's actually three things that happen, and it's really quick, but it's worth knowing what they are so that if something goes wrong, you can make adjustments. So let's look at each one. The first step is getting the sun tracker into the sun. These uh, photoresistors are separated into four quadrants and they're shaded from the sun if this thing isn't directly pointed at the sun. Now it's not perfect, but it gets us, you know, close to oriented towards the sun and ready for the next step. Um, now, if this doesn't work, if you have a problem here, it's because the potentiometers on the photoresistors aren't set correctly. Turn them all the way counterclockwise and then back about five degrees. That makes them much less sensitive, so only direct sunlight turns them on. In step two, the small cutouts in the lens cover that you see here uh, create bright spots on the ground directly below the lens. You can see those in this photo here. In the top right, they're ringed in green. Now that's actually a, a photo that's been taken by the Raspberry Pi camera and then some extra image processing was done to find the brightest spots and then circle them with green. So we're roughly pointed at the sun because of the step one, but we're gonna use this image right here and find those bright spots using OpenCV and then center them into the, into the middle of the uh, image. So if you take a look at this sequence of uh, pictures, you can see that the bright spots slowly get closer to the center because the tilt and roll motors keep moving them into the center. Now, if you want to look at these, they're in your log directory under the word center. You can see those right here. So you can actually see how this thing is progressing and slowly moving those bright spots to the middle of the image. And that is the second step. In the last image that you see here though, those uh, bright lights are not actually focused into a single dot. So we've got to move the lens up or down and we use the Z-axis motors to accomplish that. So we start turning them and then we take another photo and we look to see if the bright images have gotten uh, more condensed towards the center or further spread out. And we can change directions as needed. And we keep moving that Z-axis up and down until we get that uh, bright dot to take up only a few hundred, so, a hundred pixels or so. Now, you can actually look at the results of this. Um, after the Orient script has run, uh, you need to take a look below the lens and see is the sun a little prick on the, on the ground or um, is it still spread out? And you can actually, in the latest version of the uh, control panel, you've got manual adjusts. You can change the roll and tilt servo motors and you can move the Z-axis motors up and down. Um, I, I find that it's best to run this over some plain earth so don't have you know, three inch tall uh, plants below it because it may really struggle to find how high to put the Z-axis if it's uh, being, looking at a lot of different um, depths of things below it. So if you put it on something that's really plain, just plain dirt and do this, um, you usually don't need to do any manual adjustments. Um, only when you have it on some really complex terrain is it going to need to do that sort of manual intervention step. Now you're ready to run. Um, you can choose a normal run, select the types of weeds you want to kill, tell it how far you want to go and how many rows you want it to do. Now, at the end of each row, it's going to turn around 180 degrees and adjust the tilt and roll motor so that they should still be pointed at the sun. That works best when the sun is high as in the sky. Um, and now note, it doesn't have a compass or a GPS to actually help with the turns or the row length. That's something to be added in the future. For now, it's just using dead reckoning. It, it can get a little messed up uh, on, those, on those turning of the row. Uh, now, here's a quick demo. Watch it go. 
So we'll hit submit and it's gonna start rolling forward and it's gonna start trying to kill weeds as it goes. So the first thing it did, I took a picture there. It said, oh, I found some uh, creeping Charlie and here it goes. It's gonna try to zap that stuff. And you can see there, it's already starting to smoke. Now, this is one of the bad things though. You can see that these, uh, the wheelbase is quite narrow. So as the ground has some terrain to it, it will actually cause the focus of this lens to change. Um, that's one thing that we're gonna have to correct by having a much larger design in the next version. Um, but for now, this is you know, a really easy something to work with. And you can see those things are really starting to smoke there. Even with you know, somewhat unfocused, thing, things burn. Um, so this is gonna finish its little routine here. What it does is it, it moves around. It moves the, the lens left and right, and it moves forward and back and up and down. And now it's gonna drive forward a little bit and look for the next weed. And if it finds what it thinks is another weed, it's gonna go through the same routine. So it's gonna lift the lid and it's gonna to attempt to burn that weed. Now so what's it actually doing here? Um, when it runs, it drives forward, takes a photo, and then it breaks that photo into a little grid pattern. And it analyzes each piece of that grid. It's, it's looking at 224 by 224 pixel squares. So it breaks the image up into that many you know, little squares. And that size is chosen because that's what the image classification model wants to use, 224 by 224. And the image classification model judges each little grid separately. So um, it tries to decide what it thinks is in that little 1.5 inch by 1.5 inch square. Uh, and it actually scores each one of those. So if you look in your log files, you're going to see uh, two different types of uh, images. One is prepended with the word search, and that's the whole image. And then there's going to be a whole bunch of little grid images. And in red text that you see here, it's what it thinks is in this image and the confidence of how confident it is that that's actually what's in there. Um, so right now, when it uh, thinks that it's found a weed with a confidence of about 70%, it'll calculate the changes in the swing, tilt, and roll motor so that it can actually center itself over that little square, and then it starts its kill sequence. Before it starts the kill sequence, though, it actually takes a photo that is prepended with the word kill. Now, I just want to point this out here. Uh, the search, the kill, and all of the little grid images uh, all have the same tag in here. So you can actually see uh, you know, the highlighted file names here. This is an easy way to look through your log directory. You can see what the search image looked like. You can see how it scored every one of those uh, little grid images. It's actually in the file name that you see there. And the confidence of how confident it is of that. And then you can see the image that it takes just before it starts the kill sequence. Now, this is what the kill sequence looks like. First, it opens the lid. Then um, it basically tries to cover a 1.5 by 1.5 inch square. And actually, it also has a, a Z height of about one inch. So it, it drives forward and back. Um, it moves the swing motor left to right just a little bit, about you know, five degrees. Um, and that's trying to cover a, you know, an X, Y pattern on the ground of about 1.5 by 1.5 inches. And then in between each one of those forward and back and side to side moves, it's also moving those Z axis motors up and down so that we're not just focusing on the ground, we're also focusing about an inch above that. So we're able to kill everything that's in that little square on the ground. Then when it's complete, it closes the lid and it continues looking through the rest of those grid squares uh, in the image that it took. When it has killed all of the weeds that it thinks are in that latest search image, it'll drive forward, and then it'll start the whole process over. Take another search image, uh, look through each one of those images, try to find you know uh, whichever piece of that image has a weed in it, center over it, and then run the uh, kill routine so that it focuses the light on that little square. So that's it. It'll just keep driving and killing until it finishes the, the distance that you told it to go and the number of rows that you told it to go. And if you want to dig in later, you can always go back to those logs. Um, they're mostly photos of centering, search images, classification, you know, the little grids uh, broken up from the search image, and then the kill image before it actually starts the kill routine. And um, you know, when it's running, you gotta keep an eye on this thing. I only run it when there's no fuel load on the ground in case a fire does start. And I always work nearby in the orchard or the garden uh, so that I can keep track uh, of it and you know, see what kind of progress it's making. I've had issues where the wheels get stuck uh, or where after a long time of running, it's no longer oriented to the sun and I have to rerun that orient to sun script. Also, when it turns around in the rows, uh, when it tries to make that 180 degree turn, um, it can get confused, so check in on it at those points. It may not make the full 180 degrees, or it may not manage to refocus itself on the sun. Um, so you may have to run the re reorient it. And I've had the Flask app uh, hang on me. 
Um, so I was actually had to SSH into the Raspberry Pi, kill the flask app, and just restart it manually. It's the same command that was in that installation script. You just pop it into the command line, run, and you know now you'll be able to access the web page again. So that's it. This thing runs. Uh, you can go out and try it. But you're only going to have the uh, couple weeds that come prepackaged with my current image classification model. So you're going to want to probably make your own image classification model. And that's way easier than you think. And it's free. We're going to go there in our next video.